Do people build an immunity? No? Yeah. Well, apparently, even if you look young, don't take one. It's for the kids. We got some wooden snakes. Uh, everybody has a ticket. Over here's a couple too, Jim. Over here's one. You gotta make another lap, Jim. Think that he had tagged 43 years prior. So. Over here in the corner, Jim. Bother with me. Right here. Where at? Right there. Five zero seven. Okay, well, I hope you like to hear Five zero seven, anybody? Five, up here seven. at the same he doesn't have young every year. And when they have those six to eight little ones, on average, only one of them's going to reach adulthood. There's a very high attrition rate. They won't survive. So if we, if we catch a female rattlesnake right now, and she's driving, we bring her in here and traumatize the poor little thing. Or grab her in the combs where the, where the young are kept while she's pregnant, you know, you're hurting a lot of snakes. Our next winner goes. And if you read stuff, you hear things that a lot of people think that the young ones are more deadly than the older. And that is not the truth. Because, I mean, they might give them more because there's a lot of dry bites involved with an adult rattlesnake. Not all of them give them venom all the time. They all get just some touch. They don't have very good eyes. They can't hear anything. Um, so they're striking out of just anything. They might not give you, the little ones, they're going to give you whatever they have, but, like I said, if I had nothing like the other ones, you know, so. Got another one, Jim? Yeah! It's not how different they are. Um, I have a good friend that's walking around here somewhere, they got bit last Saturday. They go to restaurant, them finger bites are the worst. I mean, I got a crooked finger from one 20, 20 years ago. Um, this looks a little bit like that. Hopefully, he doesn't have the destructive tissue underneath I did. It was a timber rattlesnake. One, one just like that one on that rock. Probably, I think it was 49 and a half inch long. It hit him three pounds back to nothing, and it happened like that. No, he was sitting in the ambulance within about two minutes. Yep. That, is, that would be the absolute worst thing you could do to yourself. If it was a venomous snake. Here we go, we got another poster. 403, 483. 483. 483 is the last three numbers, kids. Up here. He's up. Yep, there you go. Um, if you're with a bunch of buddies, don't pick, catch the snake to take to the hospital. A nurse don't want to see a snake in the hospital. on what they're eating and surviving. Um, but they'll, uh, I've had them bite me in the back of the hand here and I had no reactionary way to back of my head. I'm crossing my fingers saying, well, I hope it was a dry bite. And uh, the one that happened, uh, it was a diamondback bite. It was like, I'm good. In about 20 minutes, it swelled up like a tick. You know, just in a pocket, in between skin or whatever before your body found it and absorbed it into the bloodstream. What's that? Use it. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Like the old stuff I had, like the old uh, horse, it was horse here, man, I've had back up until the mid 90s. And I came out with this new stuff that's a sheep serum. You know, that's what they inject the... It's 50-50 live birth to your, your, um, your venomous snakes. And now the 18 non-venomous snakes, we have half of them. Not on give live birth, not on their egg layers. Um, this snake is an egg layer. It's a constrictor. Like most of our non-venomous snakes in Pennsylvania, they have on average of about 150 really little teeth in their mouth. The bigger the snake, a little bit bigger the teeth. Now they're not giant teeth like this, but they can rip your skin up. That snake there will, will tear your skin up, kind of like I tell the kids, no different wrecking your bike. They're going picking the uh, raspberries and getting getting it called the jagger bush. This is something you don't go buy to and try yourself. Most of your families had dogs and cats and horses or something. 
my old man had rattlesnakes. See a man around right there? I've been doing this for a long hand. time. Doesn't mean I know what I'm doing, but. Now the first thing we do, we grab the snake. We, we already identified it as a black face timber. Uh, now the first thing Alicia's sir, gonna do is put her finger right over the butt. No okay? But because like they will spray and it doesn't taste good and it really smells. The base of the rattle. 21 or more is a male, 20 or less is a female. We know this is a male. I do. I'm a snake head. The body structure and it's hot. Once you get to that 42 inch size limit, you're taking 99% of the females out of the equation. They don't get that big. And then we count the rise for most rattles. And a lot of people, a lot of people bring them in and say, well, I have one more rattle now. We don't count this rattle right here. It's white and it's not loose yet. He is going to shed its skin probably in the next two to three weeks. And then you can see underneath this roughage here, these scales, that there's another one already growing. But when that skin pops out over top of it, it becomes a loose segment, then we call it a rattle. Button, button, and that's the one they're born with. And very few times you see a snake over five or six years old with that same button on the end. A button on a rattlesnake is very thin. Uh, it looks like a, a very skinny, I'm sorry, it looks like a watermelon tube with a crease in it. Like I said, they're very brittle, they take off really easy, um, and they'll never have another one. Talking about the age of the snake, this one had, what, nine or ten rattles? Nine rattles? The last rattle up here that was maybe shed three or five years ago, it's just as big as the base rattle. It's been this size for a long time. Just like me, I'm not getting much bigger. Okay? These are the dog snakes, and this, this snake isn't really going to get a whole lot longer. One's under 45 inches. Um, that are going to, you'll see a cone effect for the rattles. Skinny at the end and wide at the base. That's our younger snakes that are going to uh, grow a lot more. Hey, are you going to be doing this a long time? Because I hardly ever have any help. You guys got a lot of help. When I let Jim get there, I hold the snake. Like I like to be held, nice and gentle. And I use one finger underneath his belly, like this. I don't put fingers on the side of the snake because I don't like that. And neither do they. And you use this finger right here. You see my, my thumb? See how he just stretches nice and easy. And we come back. Look at that measure. Right at 50? So, I mean, it just... All this, when you have a whole bunch of people going like this, it's like somebody grabbing you. You know, if you don't like it, you tense up. Yep, let's paint it. Let's paint it now and then we'll weigh it. We give out prizes for length. We give out prizes for weight. We give out prizes for anything just to find a rattlesnake hunter to come in here for us. The reason we mark the snake with different markings, you'll see a different marking on every one, is because whoever snake it is, it's their responsibility to take that snake back into the wild and release it where they caught it at the end of the weekend. All right, now we're going to weigh it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 That's a big snake. Yep, come right over here. Put the tail in first, okay? Tail in first, take the hold. Yep, like that. Put it down here and just pull, pull everything right out. Okay, yep, now pull straight up. Yep, there you go. We're at 58 ounces. That's a good, healthy snake. You get any snake, 
Get that close to that four pound range. That's what all these guys and gals are out looking for. They're looking for, we had two snakes last weekend, turned over four pounds. Uh, one was 53 and a half and one was 53, I think. But uh, big, healthy, heavy snakes. You want to do another one now or just you want to wait and do it? Sounds good. Yep. Our next snake we're measuring is the darkness in it. We still consider the yellow phase has yellow head, yellow eyes. Dr. Reynolds? Yep, that narrows down to two. Ten rattles. All right. Good. Good. Okay. We get four and a half. Okay. Now we're going to measure one snake after this and then we'll do a little talk. We'll start with a, with a question. So if anybody got any good questions for us, uh, maybe we'll start with Cody. Yeah, uh, we'll start with Cody. Since so your lymph nodes, you got a big patch of lymph nodes under your armpit here. Yeah. So they follow them, right? And then it just it just follows your whole side down. And then, you know, I'm, wow. And then it went down to here and it wrapped around here and came back up from that around. finger bite. Wow. So, um, and I argued with him for quite a while, and I said, listen, I'm not going to helicopter you. Raise your hand. You guys got blue tickets? That's enough of your hair. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, all right. You see pictures? We have pictures hanging up in the corners. Really, we got the real thing right here in front of us. Any of his looking. Now you probably here got built last weekend at a snake hunt. Him and I run all the other pits and all the other hunts. Um, unfortunately. Accident is happening, you play with fire, you get burnt once in a while. I just asked. Um, he got nailed three times on the back of the index finger. Uh, uh, some good swelling through his hand, up his arm. I believe the swelling made it, I mean the bad swelling made it into about, yeah, elbow. Um, bruising, he has bruising still down the side into his hip area. Uh, but the, the venom blister there is what, what really makes it look ugly right now. And, and I'm banking on his finger not looking like mine. Crooked. I'm still thinking it isn't, buddy. Um, but I'll be able to beat him in golf for the next eight, 10 months. That's the best part of this whole thing. Um, got the bit, uh, got the bite, uh, received 14 vials of venom. This is immediate treatment. You're in the ambulance sitting in a couple, in a couple minutes after the bite. Um, relatively, uh, same kind of outlook I've seen. If you've heard me talk about my bites in the past, within the first minute, uh, you feel it in your face and your lips first and your lymph nodes. Um, the venom pumping yourself. That's why all the old days of cutting the venom, cutting the bites, sucking the venom out, and all that stuff you see in the cowboy movies and the fancy snake bite kits. Forget about all that stuff. You know, this venom's in there. You know, if you're lucky, you might get a little bit of, that has been saturated in your skin. It kind of looks like a beer colored, uh, apple cider colored uh, color to it. But the stuff that's in there is already gone. Until you get bit, unfortunately I've been bit a lot, it's there and it's gone. It's not waiting to get sucked in there. It ain't going to lay around there when you get sucked out. And what you do, bruise it with sucking on it, with them suction cups, with milking it. A lot of guys used to go like this and milk the hands, kind of keep... All you're doing is bruising the area. Cutting it just is another spot. If you cut the snake bite, and some of these bites are worse than others, and you have the massive swelling, it gives a place for your skin to tear or break. 
And the best, the, the biggest part about the snake bite, after you survive the first day or two, but you're going to survive these bites. You know, you're going to survive them easy as long as you're not, you know, super drunk or hooked up or whatever you're doing, you know. And you're a healthy person, you're going to get, you're going to get through it easily. Um, but the worst part of the bite after those two or three days is how it feels and all that stuff is the infection in the area. If now your body's depleted, you know, it doesn't have the fight that it did before you got bit here, at least for the next couple of weeks, months. And uh, that that finger that finger can become infected very easily. So we want to keep the we don't want to cut it at all. We don't put we don't put ice on the turn uh, we don't put a tourniquet on a snake bite because it damages skin area. We might let use a light restriction band that I you know I helped uh, a couple of ammo screws in the past, in the last 35 years of doing this, we might use a light restriction band, like a blood pressure kit. We might take an ice pack and a towel and we'll put it on here, like on that particular light, we'll start here. We'll leave it there just for a few minutes. In a towel, we don't want it directly on, we don't want to hurt the skin, damage the skin. Then we'll move it up. All we want to do is help constrict the veins just a little bit to help slow down the blood flow. Do we get into the hospital, him or her to the hospital, get the blood, get your blood tested, and then going back to it, just because you got bit doesn't mean you got venom. They don't give this a set amount of venom every time they strike. I've been lucky enough, I've had eight bites that I've got venom, but I've had a whole lot more. They give me no venom at all or just very little, no different to be stick. Um, so that other snake. That's why you gotta keep calm, and that's the best medicine you can give your kids if they were bit. Somebody you're with, your buddy, anybody you're with, is to stay calm about it. Not reach out to our ambulance crews. We had a couple of girls here, uh, EMTs here. That's the biggest thing I can say is stay calm. You know, don't get all wigged out. That's the guy that should be wigged out, you know. Um, my biggest thing is all of my 25, 30 years ago, we were doing a, a, a kid's pit at Mother's Snake on Crossport. Got a bunch of kids in and they handle non venomous snakes. And this little boy, by his age, his youngest boy, about three years old, he got bit by a ring neck. Now, ring neck's teeth are like 120 grit sandpaper. They won't break the skin when they're young like that. He took it and he kind of looked at it because he didn't know what to think. But his mom was right outside looking. She seen it. He wasn't crying. But his mom started flipping out. Well, then the kids started bawling and Well, if that was a venomous reptile play, that's the worst thing he could have done for that kid. Stay calm. It happened. we got to work our way through. Get to the hospital. You're going to think it hurts that bad. I want to stick it in ice. Um, but uh, just just don't do that. Remember, just because you got bit, get, get to them, all right? Get to the hospital as soon as you can. You have a three to five hour window. Even if you've got a good amount of venom like Cody has um, in that boat, you got a good amount of time to get there. Three to five hours. It's, like I said, 21st century. It isn't like the old days. We had to take the horse to town. All right? So you'll get there. Stay calm and get they there. Had another that was hey, showing what is what? They can't tell us how bad it hurts. I don't know. Um, I've been around one state fight with a dog, and it was a government venture. A fella came to my state hunt that we used to have down in Sunbury. He got bit at the edge of his nose. He's a big dog, too. Right on the edge of the nose, right where it turns black to fur. Got bit, and when I got he came over the snake hunt, we were looking at the dog. This was a good while ago. And his head looked like a basketball. His ears were like, I mean, you know, pointed head like a club. Um, it just, and he was just laying there like any dog would if it was sick. And you know, what, what I do is I, I say, you take your vet. You know, these days, dogs can take care of better than people. So, um, back then I said, you know, it was my animal. Um, so, don't do that. That dog, I went back the next year to that same snake hunt. It was always, uh, 
the second, right third weekend, the weekend, the weekend, the fifth weekend. Is there before poison I start coming here. I think it was like a nice deal. It makes like a little triangle. But that's how you tell a poisonous thing. I went back the next year, the guy lost the whole state. And he was helping her out because it was a young guy. That's how you tell the difference. When he pulled up in, he was three, three and a half. He was three, three and a half. And he looked perfectly healthy. I don't know. One eye was going this way and one eye was going that way because it's swelling. Damage the top of the What do you want? You don't get to touch him, you're working. But, yeah, get him to a vet, vet hospital, whatever. Yes, we do. No. See those poison sacks? See how it makes it like a triangle? See how the black snake, non poisonous, his doesn't have the triangle. So when you bring the one in the house, this is the one you want to bring in for mom. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. I want to go to and yeah. okay. All right, kiddos. Really, really don't, I don't, if you have good food, I don't know, you're rock I've been down that way a couple of times. But, yeah, a male snake, like, like I'm a male snake, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for meat, I'm looking for the smorgasbord. So that's what they're going to. And just because you got a snake in your yard doesn't mean he's staying there. He might stay there for a few weeks to eat whatever he eats, um, but he's going to travel. And they'll travel three to five miles on average every year going back to the same den. And it, it'll, it'll, you might cross rivers, lakes, ponds, highways, whatever. They usually don't last too long if they cross highways, but they're good swimmers and they, they travel long distance. The longest one uh, that I've heard of, uh, from the Rattlesnake Research Project was 8.6 miles. And it, it, when you when you track them like that and they map them on a map, it probably looks like a dog ear. You know, and, and when they come out of the den site, the, 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 the snakes go in every different direction. They could have been brothers from the same mob. One mob, one might go north and go, go northeast and come back around. The other one might go south and come around southwest and back to that den site over here. I just want to see a fresh uh, snake bite. That's the last time he wants to see a fresh snake bite. That's for sure. Um, but, you know, he's a healthy guy. Make it through it. Hey, when you screw up, it hurts. Right? So, make yourself through. Keep yourself through it. Anybody have any other questions about? Yeah. Should. Should. Yeah, I don't know. All I know is it got a lot worse than it used to be. They're like everything else. Well, that one I was that happened in 1995. $5,800. You're putting a snake back in the bag, and, and one guy was going one way, and one was going the other. So him and I have been going it together. He started helping me when we were, what, 17? You know? And we're like 36 now, so we've been going it for a long time. We know what we're doing. And we were, you know, another fellow was helping us, and we just went in a different direction. And it's a wild snake, cat for the bag man. And we'll check each one of these, and I actually, yeah, we'll, we'll usually check every one to see if it was turned in before. So. Everything's caught within a 50 mile radius of here, which is a big area. So, but we do that, we put a radius on it because we want to make sure the snake gets back to where it was caught by the end of the hunt. Any questions down this way? On average, it's three to five miles. The longest one we ever seen that was had a, with a, not a pit tag in it, but it did have a pit tag, but it had a tracker in it, was 8.6 miles. The older they get, the further they go. Usually, it's just like some people are homebodies and some people aren't. Um, a couple of things I've seen with the Rattlesnake Research Project and you know, see some of the records they have is, you know, you'll have a snake, um, might be brothers, come out of the den site, one will go one way, one will go the other, coming back. And it always looks like a dog ear if you track them, the different tracking features, and it comes back, just a big loop. Um, it can be Raystown Lake, big lake, across that, Susquehanna River. You know, they'll cross them, there's these scent trails. The harder you leave a scent trail in water, black snake, you won't have rattlesnakes. Black snakes and rattlesnakes, all snakes pretty much heal along together. 
I've been in spots where you've seen them all piled up in one big pack. But if you have, if, if your house is right here on this hill, and there's rattlesnakes here, but you have a big old black snake or two laying around, these are eaten by the easy stuff up. Rattlesnakes and copperheads are not constricted, so they can't climb well. They're looking for the easy stuff. They're looking for the, the mice, the ground moles, the chipmunks, the small red squirrels, and then the birds. They, they eat a lot more birds than people think, you know, so the black snakes already have that cleaned up. So they're going to look through for it, and they're going to keep going. They're going to find it somewhere the snakes. There's a big old robin flying overhead and sees a snake about this big. That's just a big worm. The bigger, the bigger the snake, and then it's the bird, bigger the bird. You got hawks, the eagles, you got bobcats, you know, any kind of predatory animal like that. When he's done giving out the kids, tickets to the kids, we're going to draw prizes. If Cody's coming around here, like I said, if you just walked up, that's a timber rattlesnake bite. That's three hits on the back of the knuckle. On the side. Yep. I'm going to have two big old dudes up on their high legs just pawing each other. So. They get down there and they're hungry, yep. Yeah. They're probably not, he's, that video probably was just eating it to eat it because they're hungry, he's probably just mad at it. And, you know, you know. There's a lot of things, that, you know, like it's rule of thumb, not many snakes eat other snakes. Um, you get the black racers, not the black rats, everybody sees racers. They will feed on other snakes quite all. Um, most other ones, but I've seen copperheads eat small rat snakes. I've seen rat snakes eat rattlesnakes. Right? Yeah, you know, when you're in a, in a captivity, when they're hungry, they eat something. I eat so many. Dude, this is. We're going to have a bunch of more snakes brought in here today. We had a nice, healthy yellow faced timber over here. This is another yellow one. If the head's yellow, the eyes are yellow, we consider it a yellow phase. I have no idea why the scientific community call it a phase. Because whatever color they're born is the color they stay. They don't change colors. The very limited color you see as difference is, like this snake right here, nice healthy black phase, his eyes are all cloudy. Within about two weeks, he's going to shed his skin. And then, instead of being a little dull looking, kind of like you get a sunburn and that skin peels off, then it'll become like a velvety looking red, so black is. That's the only color you see changing in a rattlesnake. And that's because the skin's sloughing off. Question for you. Yeah. Do they travel around all different times of the day, or they... They're primarily nocturnal creatures. Um, do most are feeding at night. Now, earlier in the year, this weekend is what I consider the tail weekend for a rattlesnake. Because now it's starting to get warm, and it's staying warm all day long. So now they might, up to this time, they might be congregating in basking areas on the rocks and where you see them all from, I'm a hunter, so turkey season, fishing season, girls have up to now you're going to see them there. The warmer it gets, so now they're like a needle around, in the haystack. All the way around, we're going to have so that snake that might have been in one spot with a whole bunch of other snakes for this time of year, it's warm enough, they're going to be traveling. Everywhere. What are you all smiling for? Some people think that they don't travel on night. Know, uh, my hand to do the winning true, ticket? Right? No, that's not true. <laughs> no. Oh. Kids only, you got. Okay, yeah. okay. There he comes. See him? Yep. See that rattle going? Yep, we'll be here all day. Right down here by the line. It's a spot, not the, the sink, you know. Okay. The Right here, you need one over here? Oh, we got one. Y'all want? Okay, we got one. Anybody? You need one or you got it? He got it. Oh, up there in the corner is one, Jim. He's coming. That was the last call. We're going to do... What's the last thing to do first?
I truly don't want to do the test to see what happens. But uh, I know the, the states, I've tried to die just as quick as the first one. We don't have any yet, but I know there's going to be some here directly. What's that? Today? 50, no, no, overall, whatever. Like, just one play, I don't know. 58. 58. And it was like four years ago, something like that. Oh, now Paul. Two hundred eighty-seven. Right here, Jim. Oh, right behind you. Where are you at, buddy? Where are you at? Right here. Now watch, when they let them move, they stand right by them. They don't even We've got a black beans timber. Yeah, it's just a young adult. 
They want to go to a rocky outcropping. They usually sat or facing the south southeast slope of the hills because those rocks warm up early in the morning real quick and they'll lay on. But right about now, it's getting nice out all day long. They are nocturnal creatures. So from here on out, you're not going to find too many snakes on the rocks. You're going to find them in the birds and build a world with all rocks. They're looking for new things. They're looking for meat. They're looking for food. So that'll take them on a very long trek. It might be three to five, and the longest we've seen one go from its dead site to be 0.6 miles. And they usually travel the same corridor every year, making a little bit of a change, but seeing the general direction in their uh, mating and, and food regimen. So, in the body, you know, the deadly snakes. You can see walking around here, and not coming out. I'm telling you right now, those two snakes brought in were just caught. They weren't in the cellar for the last time. You know, um, the wild snakes, they want to be left alone. They want to get away from us. But they're just like us. Some of them are homebodies. They don't travel as far as others. Um, but it, just a lot of different things go to it. They, uh, the wild snakes come out of the same dead site. Uh, had trackers in them to see where the den was. They were caught in different areas. The two males went back to the same den site. So the next, the next spring, uh, the first of March, the first weekend of March, they only went in to get the snake, take it back to Colorado, to take the tracker out of it. Oh, I don't know. Is Bertie still out there? Wait, wait, and all that stuff. You give out prizes, copperhead prizes, venom, uh, non venomous. Usually goes to a big black rat. We have a, uh, another award we give out to a kid to bring in the most species of snakes. Uh, we got to get this younger generation involved. Pretty neat little thing. Mother, I mean, my son traveled with me all these hunts. He's 24 now, but that's all he did. He brought the, brought the non venomous snakes, and now he gets the venomous snakes all the time. Don't put a target on it. Right here is Cody with his finger. That's what it is. Just with the river rattlesnake bite, your body is depleted. He surely doesn't feel as good as he did a week. You have to pass on Saturday night. But, uh, 
The swelling receded, he had swelling through the elbow, he has bruising the whole way down his side, under his arm, and his left legs are very sore. Um, but it's... Uh, he has 14 miles and a venom with immediate medical attention. So, there's no cure to this stuff. <laughs> This was in 95. Yeah, yeah, I just... It was a diamondback rattlesnake, so the venom's the same as the hematopsic venom. With the diamondbacks, their venom has a little more of a destructive property to it, the tissue. Same kind, it's like... Obviously, venom's like gasoline. You got the proper heads with 87 off the... You got the diamondback with the 93. The timber rattlesnake's actually like a 94. It's a little stronger. It doesn't have the... The tissue, the tissue, the structure coffee, the crust of the diamond bags. And then, uh, then you got the small pygmy rattlesnakes, your Mojave's that have recent fuel kind of stuff. That's really strong.
the group sitting right now. The group now the seat brought in was 53 and a half inches and four and a half pounds. They knew they weren't going to win that. The Dan Agee's stupid cell phones really screwed up. Everybody knows everything.